In this video, we will show you China's newest mega project and reveal what major discovery they did on the moon. We delve into the most recent updates from the realm of space exploration. Our discussion encompasses noteworthy events such as China's remarkable discovery of vast quantities of lunar water, the implication of robotic breadcrumbs aiding cave diving rovers on Mars, and the ongoing challenges faced by space agencies in certifying medical professionals for orbital missions. Chinese researchers have recently conducted a study revealing a significant discovery of water resources on the moon. The findings published on March 28th extensively analyze samples collected during five separate lunar lander missions. In late 2020, the Chinese National Space Administration accomplished a successful operation deploying a lander equipped with a drill and scoop to the lunar surface on November 28th. The lander effectively obtained four payloads of lunar rock and regolith, which were subsequently transported back to Earth by a waiting orbiter before December 16th. The lunar material retrieved consisted of microtechites and small glass beads. These beads are created through the collision of meteors with the moon's airless surface, a common occurrence. When the meteors strike, the heat generated melts the silica present in the soil. However, the lunar regolith also contains a considerable amount of oxygen leading to the ejection of molten silica and oxygen-filled dirt into the moon's atmosphere. Subsequently, these ejected materials encounter ionized hydrogen particles from the continuous solar winds. As the silica cools around certain areas of this reaction, water, H2O, becomes trapped within the glass beads, effectively covering the lunar surface. According to the researchers, it is believed that the extraction of water can be achieved with relative ease through a process involving the collection of regolith sifting to gather the beads, followed by boiling and subsequent cooling of the vapor to obtain water. Notably, these beads are abundantly present in lunar soil across the entire moon, from the equator to the poles, making this method applicable in various locations. However, the significance extends beyond this. The researchers have made a noteworthy discovery indicating that these beads are highly likely to be responsible for the existence of water reservoirs beneath the lunar surface, a subject of scientific curiosity for many decades. The research paper commences by referencing the discovery made through lunar exploration over the past 20 years, which indicates the presence of significant amounts of water on the surface of the moon. It has been confirmed that the water ice is specifically found in the polar regions, where continuous shade and deep cavities formed by meteor impacts exist. Previous experiments, such as LCROSS mission conducted in 2009, assisted NASA in confirming the existence of a water layer concealed beneath the outer layer of lunar soil. However, this new paper suggests that NASA's findings were likely focused on a concentrated layer of these bead-like structures. According to the researchers, microtechites form, formed by meteor impacts become buried beneath the lunar dust over time and gradually migrate beneath the surface. Under suitable temperatures, these beads gradually release their trapped water. The moon lacks an atmosphere, resulting in extreme and regular temperature fluctuations, including a swing from 120 degrees Celsius during the day to negative 130 degrees Celsius at night. Even at the equator, the poles can experience even colder temperatures. Therefore, this consistent temperature variation replenishes the underground water reservoir that NASA has been identifying on the moon. As a result, several important conclusions can be drawn. Initially, this discovery is incredibly fascinating. It is truly mind-boggling to learn that the moon possesses a renewable water source generated by the energy released during meteor impacts. This revelation expands our understanding of reality in an extraordinary way. Furthermore, it implies that we can now begin strategizing for establishing long-term settlements not only on the moon, but also on other airless celestial bodies. It is highly probable that this process occurs universally wherever solar winds and meteorites collide. Additionally, this finding signifies that we are not confined solely to the polar regions for establishing habitats as it unlocks the entire surface for exploration and potential habitation. Additionally, this signifies that we possess a consistent method of generating not only water but also oxygen for respiration and hydrogen for fuel. Prior to this, it was already established that lunar regolith holds substantial quantities of hydrogen and oxygen, and research efforts were underway to determine alternative methods for extracting these elements. However, the discovery of this supplementary source of vital elements amplifies the moon's viability as a resilient hub of activities beyond our initial expectations. 
According to the researchers, further experimentation is required to validate the method of extracting water from the glass beads. However, this finding significantly expands the possibilities for exploring and inhabiting the moon. More importantly, it establishes a strategic headquarters for our endeavors in exploring the remaining parts of our solar system. Utilizing the moon as a launch site for rockets presents a comparatively simpler task than navigating them through the Earth's dense atmosphere and strong gravitational pull. With sufficient time, our moon has the potential to become a crucial center for the subsequent phase of the ongoing space competition. A team of scientists from the University of Arizona is currently working on a groundbreaking project that aims to enable rovers to navigate and explore caves on far-off planets without getting lost. The head researcher, Wolfgang Fink, has drawn inspiration from the classic tale of Hansel and Gretel, envisioning the rovers leaving behind a trail of Wi-Fi breadcrumbs. Fink explains that these breadcrumbs would be in the form of miniature sensors attached to the rovers, which would be deployed as the rovers move through underground environments such as caves. In essence, the solution is rather straightforward. When the robots disperse, they leave behind small devices at regular intervals. These devices serve as communication relays resembling miniature Wi-Fi hubs, enabling the rovers to communicate with each other. Subsequently, their programming takes charge, facilitating exploration. Moreover, to ensure the transmission of data to Earth, the group of rovers includes a central unit, an automated hub responsible for relaying the data obtained by the cave divers. Fink mentions that this central unit primarily collects data passively, but it can also assume direct control over one of the subordinate rovers, if circumstances require it. In order to navigate effectively, the small exploration drones would require the installation of LIDAR sensors capable of detecting light. Additionally, a sophisticated algorithm would be essential to guide their search patterns and enable them to adapt in case a drone is lost, as these drones are intentionally disposable. Fink and his team of researchers hold the belief that it would be impractical to retrieve these robots once they enter a cave. So, the drones will be engineered to maximize their exploration range before being left behind. Operating robotic rovers, drones, and landers on faraway planets has consistently posed challenges. It takes approximately 40 minutes for signals to travel from Earth to Mars and vice versa, resulting in sluggish communication. However, as we prepare for missions to remote celestial bodies such as Saturn's moon Titan, or even other star systems, the necessity for enhanced automation solutions becomes apparent. These solutions aim to address the prolonged signal durations, which can range from hours to days or even years. The team of researchers posits that this particular system holds a potential beyond its usage in caves alone. For instance, Titan boasts expansive lakes that could be explored utilizing this approach. Likewise, Europa, one of Jupiter's moons, harbors a colossal ocean beneath its icy exterior. These circumstances are bound to pose challenges for automated missions in maintaining communication with Earth. However, an economical communication breadcrumb system presents a straightforward solution to this quandary. The current surge in commercial space agencies is spearheading a new era of the space race, prompting discussions among industry professionals about the necessary adaptations in our existing systems to accommodate this rapid growth. A pivotal inquiry emerging presently revolves around the certification process for prospective medical practitioners in space-related endeavors. Presently, the predominant approach employed by most agencies relies on antiquated legal frameworks, thereby limiting eligibility primarily to individuals with military backgrounds, either present or past, to undertake such roles. NASA, for example, has utilized individuals known as fight surgeons, who are medical experts with comprehensive expertise in various disciplines such as neurology and family medicine. Furthermore, these professionals must hold certifications in aerospace medicine, a domain primarily associated with military education and training. The extensive criteria result in a typical training period of 12 to 14 years for a NASA flight surgeon. Although it may initially appear strict, the demands of the job align perfectly with the qualifications of these medical professionals. Space-born medical specialists possess a unique responsibility in addressing any potential issues that may arise during space missions. Their indispensable role necessitates 
a comprehensive understanding of diverse medical disciplines, alongside staying abreast of cutting-edge technology and advancements in treatment methods. Merely focusing on a single ailment or injury renders their expertise futile. SpaceX has recently employed highly skilled medical professionals certified by NASA to serve as flight search surgeons during extensive crew journeys. Nevertheless, the availability of such flight surgeons is limited. Therefore, it is imperative that we take immediate action to effectively respond to the rapid expansion of space operations. Numerous efforts have been made to enhance the efficiency of this procedure. In February, a team from Western University in Canada conducted research on establishing a global accreditation system for eye care professionals. The research specifically examined the stringent regulations imposed by Canadian law, particularly the requirement for doctors to obtain licenses in each province. The study emphasizes that certifying aviation surgeons across the globe presents a similar level of difficulty. The legal foundations of the space flight industry, which originated in military or government sectors, are being held responsible. While numerous doctors possess the necessary expertise, only a limited number meet the criteria for board certification. According to the report, the establishment of a universal licensing system does not have a clear path yet, but its implementation is inevitable. As commercial space missions continue to grow, it is imperative to ensure that doctors are certified to accompany space passengers. If you enjoyed this video, kindly give it a thumbs up. We thank you for watching today's discussion and look forward to our next video.